Hi, welcome everyone. So much going on right now. While some of you were sleeping, two CMEs on their way to Earth. A large coronal hole. It's uh, near the sun's center. It's now in range to send some activity towards Earth in the form of high-speed solar winds. We can be expecting some radio outages. But when the stream reaches us in another couple of days, scientists are anticipating that elevated geomagnetic storm activity will occur. This means a good chance for even us here to see auroras, maybe some people in the States too. Uh, Two CMEs back to back on its way, pretty serious uh, stuff. So, and it's a new sunspot group or active uh, region. Uh, This was March uh, 25th. Rotated into view on Earth facing side of the sun. Central part of the sunspot is at least as large as two Earths. The region labeled AR2975. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. It is now 5.57 a.m. here in Montreal, Quebec. And I'm waiting for the sun to rise over the horizon. um, And to see if it's worse. Look at this sunspot right over here. They're merging. Uh, This was yesterday, hours ago, on March 29th. Again, the day the CME, double CME. Uh, Look at that one over on top there. Um, Let's uh, get the numbers up to give you an idea of which ones we are looking at. Here are the numbers. I'll get them up for you. Check it out, guys. 2975. Right there on the bottom is the one merging. There's 2976 is big and 2978 over top. And again, this was March 29th, a couple of hours ago, a couple, couple hours ago. We are 557, uh, now 6 a.m. actually, here on March 30th, 2022. Um, all the probes are facing the sun right now. Uh, there's a big hype about what's going on on the sun right now cycle 25 to be very dangerous and there's still even some speculation that uh well maybe less now (laughs) that cycle 24 um the cycle 25 is going to be similar to cycle 24 we're seeing the opposite already so far look at the view here and look at the can you see the lines the way on the bottom they are merging they're they're traveling towards the other sunspots and that what happens is the field lines cross each other and you can see the lines there in the bottom. So the field lines uh, form magnetic field lines. They cross each other. Massive blast of energy. You can go see on NASA if you want to see the explosion. Whatever. Um, I'm seeing uh, it live like this. I think it's amazing. We could see a real sign that, whoa, for the first time, videos of the sun are extremely interesting, aren't they? looking at all the, this activity and I'm still waiting for the sun to rise right now. But it's funny, the last uh, outgassing lunar atmosphere video, um, I didn't get any views. I think I'm about at a thousand. Um, <laughs> it should be a very interesting subject seeing clouds on the moon and a video of proof, but either way, look at the sun. One, two, three, four in the bottom. You see how they're all lined up? So right now we're looking at probably about 50, 60 Sunspots, you know, each of these areas sometimes have many spots. So uh, twice the size of um, the size of two Earths, I heard, if I'm not mistaken. But there's again speculation about the sizes also of these um, sunspot regions. Here's a little bit more information about the sunspot in question. Active re- as we transfer over to March 30th, that is this morning at 7:30 a.m. So the active region um, 2975 sunspot produced multiple uh, C's, C-class events, solar flares, and M-class solar flares. Um, so, And that's on March 28th, 2022, as well as two coronal mass ejections, um, both toward Earth. As a result, a G3 storm. So that's a strong geomagnetic storm. And uh, the geomagnetic storm watch is in effect for March 31st, as of tomorrow. We can see very well how the sun has rotated, right? The the beginning of the video is March 29th, yesterday, and you can see the sun is completely the other way. In other words, what you're seeing on the bottom, the 2978, bottom left, 
um, hours ago, yesterday, was on the complete top left. And the other flares that you see there were more in the center. So you can tell, thanks to the sunspots, um, how much it rotated. It rotated it quite a bit. Uh, March 31st is the date where they say the G3 storm should be felt. Definitely, maybe some problems with uh, the satellites or whatnot, or hopefully not the internet. We'll see. So that's pretty incredible. A G3, a strong geomagnetic storm, by the way, a G3. Um, it's now in effect for the 31st of March, 2022, but a second, even faster coronal mass ejection, CME, erupted later um, in the evening of 20, uh, the 28th of March, which associated with an M1 flare at 3.23 p.m. Eastern Daytime. An analysis indicated that the CME speed was approximately 841 kilometers per second, and uh, model guidance suggests this CME will overtake the day's earlier CME and arrive during the early evening of March 30th. So that's important to know. So in other words, we have one tonight, um, like today or tonight, depending on where you are, on March 30th, possibility that it will hit Earth, it will hit Earth, and also for tomorrow. So that's scary, one after the other. We'll see what happens. Let's head over to the moon. I didn't get much feedback on the outgassing and YouTube didn't really help us sharing out the video. So that's why I talk more about it. This is Archimedes Crater and we're now on the moon. Let's talk about the lunar atmosphere. I mentioned in the last video, the outgassing supposedly being um, the interior lunar surface uh, and radioactive decay with the outgassing. But also, and we're talking what they, um, what I've found as info and what they talk about doesn't mean it is so, right? I share information here and I leave you your own opinions. The impact of sunlight, the solar wind and micrometeorites, they say hitting the moon's surface can also release gases, so they say, um, that were buried in the lunar soil. If those gases were to be released, it is supposedly called a process called sputtering. These gases um, either fly off into space or bounce along the lunar surface. Sputtering may explain how water ice collected in the lunar craters, but Bruce says, Everyone's loud. An opinion, obviously. We never know what we can be looking at. Let's look at a couple of other examples of either atmosphere, outgassing, clouds, frost, whatever you want to call it, vapor. The information that everyone uses from NASA and scientists and everyone's like, don't use their info, they're liars. There's certain information that everyone uses. It doesn't mean it is so. And when you keep that in mind, when I talk to you about the outgassing, which NASA talks about, it doesn't mean it is so or a fact. But still, we love theorizing here. What else can we do? If I was trying to pretend that there was vegetation and people on the moon and 
Um, I, if I was hiding the outgassing theory, um, that, that wouldn't be very cool because in reality, it's just an extra theory. The outgassing, um, you know, radioactive decay, it doesn't, again, doesn't mean it's so, but I prefer having all the theories out in the open. See, I didn't put um, outgassing in the title, sadly, of this video because when I did the last time, the video was only about 1,100 or 1,200, so, you know, I try to stick as much uh, proof as I can either way in the videos. Ladies and gents, if you still are all ladies and gents, thanks so much for the amazing support that you give this channel. More videos on the way. Thanks for the beautiful comments. Cause the slow just coming soon Cause the slow just coming soon